In the world of mirrorless cameras where every small rumor can ignite an entire community of photographers and videographers. Today's unexpected revelation about the upcoming Sony A7 V completely transformed the conversation and left many creators stunned. Because what seemed like another predictable refresh suddenly evolved into something far more exciting and potentially game-changing. Especially for enthusiasts who have been begging for Sony to finally fix the rolling shutter, slow sensor. Readout and cropped 4K60 issues that have been frustrating hybrid shooters since the A7 IV first dropped. And while I was initially skeptical and assuming Sony would play it safe again by recycling the same 33 megapixel sensor and simply tossing it into the A7 R5 style body with minimal internal upgrades, the newly leaked information suggests something far more ambitious, specifically the claim that the Sony A7 V will launch with a partially stacked 33 megapixel sensor. A huge surprise because this instantly implies dramatically faster readout speeds, far better rolling shutter performance, potentially improved low light sensitivity, smoother autofocus calculations, expanded dynamic range, and the long awaited full frame 4K 60p with no APS C crop, which has been one of the biggest complaints about the A74 generation. And if you understand the technical reasoning behind this improvement, it is absolutely massive. Because the S74's sensor had a painfully slow 26ms readout speed that created wobbly jello-like distortion in video, caused skewed vertical lines when panning, and made fast action or whip pan shots look amateurish, which was a shame because everything else about that camera was excellent, but now with a partially stacked design. Something Sony usually reserves for higher-tier cinema and alpha-level models, Creators can expect readout times closer to the 10 to 15 milliseconds range, placing it in a whole new performance bracket and putting it in direct competition with cameras. Like the Panasonic S5 IIX, Nikon Z63, Fuji X-H2S, and even some entry cinema cameras, and what makes this even more unbelievable is how casually the info seems to have been leaked almost accidentally, as if someone with early access texted private details during a live stream without realizing the huge impact it would cause across the Sony community. Because once the words partially stacked sensor were spoken, the energy of the entire discussion shifted. And even though the streamer tried to change the subject immediately, the excitement was already unleashed, and thousands of Sony users instantly went from doubtful to optimistic. And honestly this news completely changes how I view the upcoming Sony A7 V because I had personally been holding off on any upgrades, refusing to invest in new glass or new bodies until I could confirm whether Sony was actually going to innovate or if they were simply going to recycle their older technology again, especially considering how disappointing. It was that Sony's FX2 cinema camera launched only a few months ago using the older, slower sensor despite supposedly being designed for filmmakers who would benefit the most from the new readout improvements. Which makes the situation frustrating for FX2 owners because the new sensor was clearly ready, available, and real, yet Sony held it back specifically for the A7 V launch. Which means early adopters of the FX2 got stuck with older tech for no reason other than product tier separation. But for hybrid shooters like me who own multiple Sony lenses and rely on the E-mount ecosystem for everything from travel vlogging to cinematic b-roll to product reviews to low-light events, the fact that the A7 May 5th finally deliver an uncompromised sensor, a faster Bions processor, improved color science, better heat management, enhanced object tracking autofocus, more reliable 4K60 recording, potentially 10-bit 4,2,2 internal video at higher bit rates, the latest AI-based subject recognition. Expanded Cine profiles, more stable IBIS performance, and upgraded ergonomics in an A7 R5 style body makes it feel like a true next-generation hybrid camera instead of a mild refresh, and while I still don't think Sony will include open gate recording, which honestly I don't personally need since I rarely shoot anamorphic or vertical optimized workflows. The absence of a crop in full frame 4K60 is such a massive improvement that it alone might be enough to pull many creators back into the Sony ecosystem, yes. Especially those who have been tempted to switch to Lumix S1 R2, Panasonic S1 HII, or Nikon Z63 because of their superior video features, and even though speculation can sometimes lead the community astray. Everything about the way this information came out felt accidental, unplanned, 
and genuine, not staged or clickbaity, and that authenticity alone makes me believe the leaked specs are real, and if they are, then the S7 V is suddenly positioned to be one of Sony's biggest mid-range hits in years, the kind of camera that sells in huge numbers because it appeals to both photographers and filmmakers, vloggers and travel creators, product reviewers and wedding shooters, essentially anyone who wants a powerful full-frame camera without jumping into flagship pricing, and the more I think about it, the more it shifts my upgrade plans, because I had been seriously considering moving to another ecosystem like the Lumix S1 R2, S5 IIX, or even buying into Leica SL lenses, but realistically it makes far more sense financially and creatively to stay within the Sony E-mount system since I already own a full collection of Sony G Master lenses, fast primes, zooms, and compact travel glass, and switching systems would require reinvesting thousands into new optics, recalibrating my workflows, and learning a whole new menu system for no real benefit if Sony is finally fixing its biggest weaknesses. And that's why if the Sony A7 V truly includes the partially stacked sensor, enhanced rolling, shutter performance, uncropped 4K60, new processor, better thermal stability, improved IBIS, updated menus, and maybe even expanded USB streaming features, better microphone preamps, or upgraded touch controls, then I will almost certainly buy it immediately at launch, and honestly I think many other creators will feel the same because this camera could easily become the next best-selling Sony hybrid camera, especially if the price remains competitive. And now I'm genuinely curious what other creators think about this, whether people believe this leak is real or just another misinterpretation, whether the A7 V will be a huge success or a disappointment, and whether Sony is finally ready to reclaim the hybrid camera crown by delivering something that feels new, modern, and future-proof instead of just repackaging old technology. And as we wait for more leaks, confirmations, and official announcements, the hype around the Sony A7 V is only going to grow, and this single piece of info has already created more excitement than anything Sony has said publicly in years, making this one of the most interesting full-frame camera releases to watch right now as we move closer to launch. And with all that said, I'm genuinely excited, more optimistic than I've been in a long time and now fully convinced that the Sony A7 V might be the upgrade many of us have been waiting for. So let me know your thoughts, share your predictions, and if you enjoyed this breakdown don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe because more deep dive camera content, Sony A7 V rumors, leaked specs, and detailed comparisons are on the way.